ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله we begin by praising allah we praise him we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge we take refuge with allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whomsoever allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever allah leaves to go astray no one can guide and i testify that allah alone is worthy of worship and that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of allah the slave of allah and he is the final messenger of allah my dear brothers and sisters <clears throat> what i want to talk to you today about is a reflection of a very beautiful hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and i really want you please to try and remember this and even more important i want you to try and act upon it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you will not enter paradise until you believe you will not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love one another you will not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love one another in this hadith my brothers and sisters the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it very clear that the connection between the muslims must be a connection of love we must love one another and if we don't have this love for each other if we don't have this concern for each other if we don't have this compassion for each other if we don't have that then we don't truly believe it's very similar to what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself none of you my dear brothers and sisters truly believe until you love for your muslim brother and for your muslim sister until you love for them the good things which you love for yourself if you don't have that quality that you prefer your muslim brother and sister to yourself or at least that you love for them what you love and you want for them what you want and you desire for them what you desire then you don't truly believe your iman your faith is deficient and there are many things like this in islam my dear brothers and sisters that the reality of iman the reality of faith the reality of what it means to truly believe in allah does not mean that we merely believe that allah exists or simply that we have the right belief concerning allah in his names and attributes or even that we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any shirk but there are things that stem from this belief 
There are things that are necessitated by this belief. If we truly know who is Allah, and this in reality is the purpose of our existence. This is the explanation. This is the meaning of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ That we have not created the human beings and the jinn except to worship us. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, it means to know Allah. It means to know Allah. When you know Allah, when you know Allah, when you know your Lord, one of the things that will become clear to you is that Allah loves, Allah loves the people of Iman. Allah loves the people who submit to Him and surrender to Him and worship Him alone. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said that none of you will come close. There is no way or no means through which we can draw close to Allah. Except through those things that Allah has made an obligation upon us. There is no way to come close to Allah. Except through those things which Allah has made an obligation upon us. And then a person increases, they do extra deeds. They increase upon those obligations. They do the sunnah mu'akkadah, they do the nawafil, they do the extra deeds. And through this, a person becomes even closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we come close to Allah. This is the means of approach to Allah. This is the wasila. This is the means of approach between us and Allah. Ours is not a deen where we worship the dead people and call upon saints and call upon the Prophet or the Prophets. We don't believe that this is the way that we become close to Allah. No, we become close to Allah by worshiping Him alone and by doing those deeds that Allah has obligated upon us and increasing on those things. And when we do that, this is how we become close to Allah. This is how we reach closeness to Allah. And when Allah loves someone, my brothers and sisters, think about this, please think about this. Imagine this, when Allah loves someone, Allah says to Jibreel, Oh Jibreel, I love such and such person. And then Jibreel tells the angels, Allah loves such and such person. And then the angels start to tell the creatures on the earth that Allah loves such and such person until the love of this person is established upon the earth. My brothers and sisters, that is why we should make dua. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should beg and plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, make me of those people who love you. Make me of those who love you. And cause those people who love you to love me. And cause me to love those people who love you. And cause me to love the deeds that will cause you, O oh Allah, to love me. What could be more beautiful? What could be more greater? What could be a more beautiful blessing in your life than Allah loves you and that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if you love Allah, if you love Allah, you will love the people whom Allah loves. If you love Allah, you will love the people whom Allah loves. And who does Allah love? Does He love the wicked? Does He love the transgressors? You know, subhanAllah, this matter of love, it is so amazing. I remember I gave a talk on this very topic of Allah and love. And when I began to research it, 
I discovered something. It wasn't I discovered it, but I rediscovered it. Most of the time, you don't find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah hates this person or Allah hates that person. No, most of the time it says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُشْرِكِينَ For example, 